What's good, y'all? So apparently Saquon Saigon Barkley apparently co-signed for Will Hernandez to be part of the Big Blue franchise, which is great because at the end of the day, we need a run game. We haven't had anything decent since, you know, Jacoby and then um, what's his name? Omar Branchov was playing. Even Tiki Barber was around. We didn't have anything solid since then. We haven't really had a solid offensive line or anything to talk about to call ourselves the Giants in a long time. Hopefully, with these new pieces being added on, it can give us a different dynamic for Eli to have a little bit longer time, you know, in the NFL than expected because this man takes hits like nobody else does you know the fact that he's been so consistent and durable is freaking amazing this man must be taking some hell of a steroids while he's on off camp and all that crap but yeah think about it you know how long does he have to throw the ball probably less than two seconds because boom it's a blitz on flower side boom it's a blitz on the other side or they're always just going to keep putting all that pressure on they don't even have to double team on flower side they could just send that free corner or something like that because Eli does not have any time to even react to it and that's his blind side which is worse he can't even see it coming if he was able to you know have some way of knowing hey look flowers just effed up let's you know let's keep it going he can't always say well flowers effed up this play or flowers messed it up again you know he has to consistently keep trying to look at his blind shoulder and then throw it over that side or keep going the other way around you know obj wasn't able to be as explosive as he is for the simple fact our play time that we have to run the offense is atrocious we don't have any set time we can't really set off the pocket like how the patriots do it or how philly even did it even with their backups because their backups are still better than some of our starting offensive line hell even the redskins had a better offensive line and moses was playing with a floating knee throughout the whole entire end of the season better than flowers was you know i guess another problem that we're having is our coaching staff is not you know promoting our players to play better you know thanks to ben mcadoo and all the other crap that was going on everybody wasn't sure what's going to happen with their jobs we got rid of Cruz, we got rid of drc you know all these players have helped the giants create a culture for what we like to see on the field victor cruz you know we missed the salsa dance the whole last season Especially with everybody being injured, I, as a Giants fan, was rooting for us to pick up Cruz. You know, damn well he's outside the stadium right now selling hot dog cart and everything. Because at the end of the day, Victor Cruz bleeds blue. Even while he was in Chicago, he was just posting up blue, you know, big blue stuff. Because that's his heart. That's where he loves. When Eli was benched, he was there with his daughter because he loves big blue. You know, all these players that, like DRC, after his the season he had last year playing with the bruised rib playing with the shoulder situation and all that stuff jack rabbit went down landon went down you know olivia vernon went down everybody in our defense good son you know bj good son went down everybody went down just because they did not have any time to rest so the fact that we let go of all these players is just not cool i feel like if you talk to DRC or talk to Cruz and see if there was a way to compensate their pay or something based on the evaluation of how they perform, maybe, you know, there's an incentive or they're just trying to get that back for OBJ, which at the end of the day, I understand. We all love our OBJ. I got my Beckham jersey at home just waiting for it to be thrown on on baby girl that I have, you know, all this stuff going on. We all got our, you know, we all want to get paid, but sometimes we got to do it the pat way, whereas, you know, I'll take a pay cut just to make sure you sign this dude, or uh, we'll all take a pay cut just to make sure so-and-so gets signed. Maybe talk to Eli about getting a pay cut because, you know, the amount that we're paying him doesn't qualify for the amount of, you know, effort or work that's been put out on the field. It's like at my job, I get paid. I'm a mechanic if you know i get paid flat rate which is doesn't matter how many hours i've been clocked in it only matters how many hours i touch the car so if a brake job pays you two hours and you only been here and you've been here for the whole day and you only did that one car all you're getting paid is two hours that's how i feel the nfl should compensate it is if you did 13 passes and you know you only made four touchdowns should you be paid 20 million dollars 
I don't think so. When there's another QB probably throwing just as much passes as you are and twice as many touchdowns, you know, they should all have a different compensation system because just because you did something great three years ago doesn't necessarily translate to the fact that you're going to do something great again this year. They should just keep, you know, making sure that our coaching staff, our scouts, and everybody's preparing our players for what, how to make them better. It's not like they do not see these people every day. I work with my coworkers. You work with your coworkers. And if somebody's having a down day, you can easily tell. You can talk to them and say, hey, look, I see you're dragging your feet, man. Is there anything I can do to help you out? Or, hey, look, man, this is how you do that. For example, I may not know how to do a rack and pinion when I first started here. My buddy came through. He was like, hey, bro, this is what you do. You disconnect this. You disconnect that. Made the situation, the process so much simpler. So now to the point where I could do it by myself with no issue. It used to take me a whole day, and now I get it done in half the time and so on and so on, depending on the car. Same thing with them. They might know how to do something, but just because I, of my experience, I might know how to do it a different way. Therefore, we would do it my way because it might be a little bit quicker or we could still, I could learn how to do it his way just for future reference if I need to find another way of getting something done. Or if you go and see the old head of the shop, which the old head of the shop for the Giants would be Eli. You go to Eli be like, hey, look, man, I need your help. Uh, you obviously know how to do this. You've been in this game for so long. Can you please tell me on how I can get a little bit better? Can you guide me or tell me somebody I can go talk to, you know, about being able, being able to take my game to the next level? All these ex-Giants players that love, the, uh, love our franchises, you know, from Justin Tuck and so on and so on. If I was Flower, I would take the initiative and go, hey, look, Justin, you see me. I can't block, you know, on my blind side. I have problems moving my feet. You know, or I'll talk to O'Hara, you know, somebody, I'll get somebody to coach and be like, hey, look, man, I know you're busy. You have a life. You have a family. You have all this going on. Whenever you have time, do you think as, you know, my peer or as somebody who came before me, do you think you could take the time and show me the way? Nine times out of ten, you know, an old head especially you know somebody that you look up to or somebody you respect and they see that you're genuine about becoming a lot better than what you are now they will take their time and go you know what young buck come under my wing i'll show you you know this is what you got to do you're planting your feet too hard you gotta you know take ballet or you probably might want to start taking some dancing glasses try to be a little bit more nimble you're too stiff you know something like that now i'm not criticizing all on flowers because at the end of the day our coaching staff could have promoted Flowers to probably be a backup and then have somebody else take his spot and make Flowers say, hey, look, you know, you see how this guy is doing it. Follow his steps. Go talk to him. Ask him how to, you know, do that or this. Maybe they try to do it. But at the same time, we all got to realize this guy is still a kid. So he's not we don't really become men or we don't start acting like men till we're 24. Now, sometimes we got to grow up quicker than that because of our circumstances of being either poor or growing up in a bad environment. But mentally, we're not 100% there until we're in our 20s, 24, 25s. Hell, I didn't know what I really wanted to do with my life even after graduating college because I just wasn't prepared for this world correctly. So imagine all this guys know is football, 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 football. You know, you're being told you're good. You're being told you're great. And then when you finally get to the next level, you have a downplay or you can't catch a break because your side is always going to be getting attacked. So the amount of weight this kid has on his shoulder is freaking, you know, incredible because he has the whole organization being, oh, you're the one that's causing us to fail. You're the one causing us to, you know, not succeed and all this other crap versus, you know, going up to him and be like, hey, look, man, look, we're going to send you away. You're going to go over here. You're going to get coached. We're going to help you try to get to the next level. You know, we're we're not one of those franchises where we can actually afford to get new players. Yes, we're a big name. We're New York football giants, but we're not the New York football giants from 08. We're not the New York football giants from back in the heyday when, you know, people used to be rough riders. You know, we're not those football giants. We're the football giants of this new generation. 
where everybody wants to be the star everybody wants to shine but they don't realize the best way to shine is by making sure your partner or your dude is shining with you now obj and shepherd and all these guys like lewis and them they're great friends off you know off the field which is on their instagram but you know we don't really see it translate because lewis didn't have such a phenomenal season i was expecting lewis to be you know, not the second coming of OBJ, but I was expecting him to have a bigger shine in our role, especially with us losing Cruz, with OBJ being out, you know, Shepard getting injured a few games at a time. I expected Lewis to be the man that we saw through, but, you know, his preparation, the preparation that they gave him or the tools they gave him to succeed wasn't there. Therefore, causing his production or his level of play not to be, you know, OBJ or Shepard style. You know, at the end of the day, he had that incredible one-handed, uh, was it one-handed or whatever? He had that incredible, spectacular catch near the sideline, which was, you know, amazing. And when I saw that, I was like, you know, this kid's potential is there. They're just not unleashing his full strengths. They're not, you know, giving him the tools to fully commit or succeed and stuff like that. I hope you don't drop the ball with Saquon. You know, Pat Shermer's our new coach. He knows how to get the best out of his players. He did that last year, you know, with Stefan Diggs, you know, and the Minnesota Viking franchise. Nobody really expected him to be as far as they did, but he squeezed the juice out of that lemon and it made a lemonade with it, right? So let's see what happens with us, so, right?